Those who work in me shall not sin. The words of the epistle of today's votive mass of the Immaculate Heart of Mary for First Saturday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we keep the feast day of two great missionaries who came from the East, like the wise men of old, Cyril and Methodius, from Constantinople. They came from the East, but they were led by the Holy Ghost to Rome, to eternal Rome, where they deposited with great reverence the relics of the, one of the first popes, St. Clement, and where they received instruction, special dispensation, and most of all, blessing and approval from the successor of St. Peter for their great missionary work of converting so many of the southern and even the northern Slavic nations the uh, Moravians and uh, the Bulgarians and the uh, Poles and the Russians and the Ukrainians. In effect, all of the Slavic peoples look to these two saints today as their patron saints, as the apostles of their nation. It is interesting to note today that uh, still today, everyone is looking to Rome. But because we are now in, in the latter days and everything is all confused, the looking to Rome is rather the looking towards the playing out of really the scenario of the last day. I was speaking just yesterday to a very holy Carmelite father who is um, a mystic, it is believed, and who received certain insights from our Lord into the events of the church in our day. And father was telling me he said, I'm afraid it's too late now. You know, it can't be stopped. That is to say, the movement now towards Christ versus Antichrist and the end time, the final battle. How many of our former co-religionists are looking to Rome today for some kind of a permission to practice the old religion, the Latin Mass, as part of the revolutionary new One World Church? And with all of the doctrinal compromises that that entails, they'll be quite happy to make them. Unfortunately, today is the day of a great victory for Satan. All the more reason to redouble our prayers to God through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, making, as we're requested, reparation to her. Don't forget today to keep Mary company in addition to your rosary for 15 minutes of quiet meditation and one or more of the mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary. Give Our Lady the weapons that she needs once again to crush the head of Satan, for in that she is most glorious. The story of our saints touches upon the events uh, of our own life in the Church today. They were, as I say, two missionaries from the East. Cyril and Methodius were brothers, and uh, Cyril was a a priest and a great teacher in Constantinople. He was called the philosopher. And Methodius, his brother, was a, a monk and an artist in a monastery in that city. The emperor sent St. Cyril first to convert some of the kingdoms of the Khazars. Now, the Khazars were a very great, uh, very populous uh, empire, in effect, of several different tribes or kingdoms from the steeps of Central Asia. Some of those were converted to the Catholic faith by St. Cyril, and happy were they. Others, around that same era, were converted by Jewish missionaries, the last of the remnants of Talmudic Judaism, which was starting to die out, and the devil saw that it could be propagated by the conversion of these Khazars, these Asian tribes. They went on to inhabit much of Europe, particularly Russia and uh, Poland, and they form their descendants to the majority of the Jewish nation today, which so resists the rights of Christ, our King, and of his Church. So you may see, in a sense, even during the time of St. Cyril, that the battle lines were already drawn up. Then St. Methodius was sent. Monks are often missionaries. You know, that's the reason why the Church has, uh, since the Council of Trent, her very strict way of training priests. Priests are trained in a monastery atmosphere for six or seven years, 
before they are deputed to go out and be active missionaries. Because you have to have that kind of a formation, that kind of a training of discipline and of silence and of study and of prayer in order to go out and to be as good priests have always been in missionaries, as St. Paul said, all things to all men. So St. Methodius made an excellent missionary because he was first an excellent monk. He went to, uh, amongst other places, he went to Moravia and then he went to Bulgaria. And Boris, king of the Bulgarians, he converted in an interesting way. He was an artist, as I say, and the king asked this missionary to paint him a picture, but he wanted a picture that was frightening, that would move everyone who saw it. And so, St. Methodius painted a picture of the Last Judgment. And, Saint, uh, and, and the king was indeed moved. He was so moved that he asked for the grace of baptism and took the name of uh, Michael. Later on, he became himself a monk and died in the odor of sanctity. And his kingdom at first resented his conversion, but eventually followed his happy example. Now, our saints went twice to Rome to uh, defend themselves against certain calumnies that were uttered against them, because even when the enemy is being fought in a very open way, still sometimes those who should be on our side and befriending us find some cause to promote our own humility or obedience by criticizing us. And in this case, it was to the Holy Father. So they had to go to defend themselves to Rome. They say that St. Cyril, even though he was the younger of the two brothers, was so discouraged by what you might call this infighting that he sort of gave up his missionary efforts. He was so hounded with criticism. And he spent the rest of his time in the church of St. Clement with the relics of this holy pope prepared for a good death. Whereas after that, St. Methodius, of an older man, went on to have a very long life. And as I say, he visited all the Slavic countries of Europe. And there, at the price of great, great sacrifice, he planted the cross. Once again, in his old age, he had to go back to Rome for a second time with a new pope to defend himself. And he went again, and very humbly, to expose the situation, to receive the, the permissions and the dispensations that he needed for his apostolate. Because it was done in the union of the Catholic Church, based on Rome, and done with great humility. Almighty God blessed this work. But the devil is always very envious of virtue, so instead of humility, he sowed pride. And so many of the descendants of St. Cyril and Methodius fell away into the Orthodox Church, into schism, and they refused to acknowledge the supremacy of St. Peter. As so many of our fellow religionists do today, they act as though somehow a pope could teach error, or that obeying or disobeying a pope were a matter of very small moment. What confusing times and sad times we live in. Truly, we must draw near to Our Lady, to her Immaculate Heart, to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the safety of her scapular, the sign of our consecration, and to fulfill the requests that are made. Those who work in me shall not sin. I think most of all, when we always when we see a page perhaps being turned this weekend, and, and a new situation confronting the church, the remnant church, most of all, we have to have recourse to the rosary with this very great confidence that even for those who are confused and deceived, if they work in Mary, they will not sin. And somehow, through the rosary and a true devotion to her, their souls will be saved, at least in charity. That is a confident prayer that we should make today on this first Saturday of July. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.